We'd like to welcome each of you to our worship services wherever you're viewing. We pray the Lord's richest blessings upon you. We continue to offer our worship on the Access Channel as well as the radio station and on YouTube, Facebook, and our website. And we'll be doing so for a little while. Uh, so the big question is, everybody's asking, is when are we going to get together and worship since the, uh, the order of Safer at Home has uh, been... Uh, overturned. Uh, we as a church, uh, I know there's many who would like to be worshiping right now, and there are some of you who want to make sure that we're safe. And so we have decided, the elders and myself, that we're going to make sure we have everything ready so that you're safe and you feel safe in worshiping too. So tentatively, we are looking at the weekend of June 6th and 7th to be when we're coming back together. And even when we come back together again, we're going to be making sure that we're worshiping in a way safely. And we pray the Lord's blessing. And keep, please keep us in your prayers. And, and we pray for your patience as well in these challenging times, getting ready for that time. Uh, it'll be here before we know it. Uh, also, want to greet you with the words we continue to celebrate our Lord's resurrection. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our opening hymn for today is Rise My Soul to Watch and Pray, LSB 663. May God bless our worship today. sustains all life, 
May your May word, word keep us mindful of your unfailing love. O oh, Son, who restores life to us by his own death and resurrection, May your word keep us mindful of your unending love. O Spirit, who daily regenerates life within us, may your word keep us mindful of your renewing love. We confess our sinfulness, which threatens the unity we have with God. Humbly we confess to God what we have done or left undone with our thoughts, words, and actions. Gracious Heavenly Father, we confess that we are not the people you want us to be. Though we long to be connected to you, so often we separate ourselves from you by hurting those around us. Though we would like to seek things eternal, so often we are tempted by the things of this world and turn our eyes, ears, hearts, and minds away from you. We are guilty of ignoring or distorting your word when it doesn't line up with what our world calls wisdom. We've sinned against you and against each other. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in with you in unity to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a call and ordained servant of the word, Announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together our calling of the day. We pray. O oh God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, Grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our hymn, Whom Shall I Fear, God of Angel Armies. Yeah. 
first lesson for the sixth Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 17, beginning with the 16th verse. Here Jesus promises the Holy Spirit and that he will not leave us orphans. Now while Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him as he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons, and in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some said, What does this babbler wish to say? Others said, He seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took hold of him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athenians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Areopagus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For as I passed along and observed the objects of your worship, I found also an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. And he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God, in the hope that they might feel their way toward him and find him. Yet he is not, he actually, he is actually not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought not to think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of man. The times of ignorance, ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed. And of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We continue with the review of the Catechism as we again look at the sacrament of holy baptism. What does such baptizing with water indicate? It, it indicates that the old Adam, Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires. And that a new man should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Where is this written? St. Paul writes in the Romans chapter 6, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. From 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 22 through 24. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds, and to put on the new self, created to be like God 
in true righteousness and holiness. And Colossians chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. But now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge in the image of its creator. Our epistle reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 22. Here it speaks about, We were put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for the reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey, when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into, the he into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers, having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our gospel reading is from John chapter 14, beginning with the 15th verse. Here Jesus speaks of his departure and promises the Holy Spirit will come. This also serves as the text for today's message. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he is one who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue at this time with the children's lesson, and today, you have me, and I'm glad to be with you with the children's lesson, at least with you 
through our broadcast today. I have some pictures to show you, and I want you to look at them, and look especially at the face of the people there, and tell me what you see, or what kind of expression they have, okay? Let's go on to the first one. What do you think? It's pretty easy, isn't it? Right, you can see the happiness, the joy that's there, right? Okay, good. How about the next one? Ooh, ooh. It doesn't look so happy or joyful there, does it? I would say that might be, that might be angry. Might be an angry look. I don't know if I can even get that crinkling of the nose that she has there. That's pretty angry to me. I don't know if I like that one. And how about the next one? What do you think? That one seems to be, what do you think? Sad? I would say so. You know, the expression says a lot, doesn't it? It says a lot on their face, but the one question is, why? Why are they sad or angry or, let's look at that last one again, why, are, why is she joyful? Do you have any idea what she might be joyful? Well, she has to tell us, doesn't she? And we can only guess. But you know what? You and I can be joyful. We can be happy. We can have hope. Even at home or at church or wherever we are, why? Why can you have joy and hope? Or let me ask you this, who gives us hope and joy? Go on to the next one for me, would you? Jesus. You know what, in all that's going on, one thing that has been good is it's been an opportunity that we can know that in all times we got joy because of Jesus. Because Jesus not only died for our sin, but he rose. He rose from the grave that we might have life now and in heaven, all because of him. And that gives us joy. And you know what? The Bible says that when people see our faces like that girl, when they see us with that joy, you know, just like we want to know why they're happy, others might wonder why we're happy too. And we can say it's not because of this, it's all because of Jesus. He gives us joy and peace always. And may we share in all times that joy. And may others know it too in Jesus. Pray with me, please. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you. We thank you that you're not only with us always, but you give us joy and hope. You paid for our sins and you rose that we might have life now and in heaven. Help us ever to know that joy and to share it. In the name of Jesus, our risen Savior, we pray. Amen. We continue with our sermon hymn. Our sermon hymn is Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. Praise the one who drove out. 
grace and peace be multiplied on each of you today and always through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior and King. And we say, Christ is risen. He is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Our text for our message for this day is from our gospel reading from John chapter 14. I read the first two verses to you again. Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. This is our text. Please join with me in a word of prayer. We pray. Gracious Lord, we pray. Be with us as we hear your word. We pray that through it you might ever strengthen us in faith and hope and the assurance that you're not only with us, but you love us and redeemed us and you will carry us through all and bring us home. I pray now that the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart may ever be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus, our Savior's name, we pray. Amen. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, have you ever felt as if God seemed to be far away from you and from our world in which we live in? Perhaps it's because everything that's going on, it's brought a lot of frustration and unsettledness. Even with things opening up, we still have apprehension, don't we? But perhaps it's Things that are going on in your life, maybe difficulty for you or for a loved one. Maybe it's financial concerns. Maybe, maybe you feel betrayed or hurt by someone. And it just seems God is distant or far away, quite removed. Maybe you and I at times feel he's hardly real for you and for me or for anyone else. Could it be that, well... Somewhere at the bottom of this all, when we feel these ways, we start wondering his motives, God's motives. And perhaps we become at times doubtful of his promises to you and to me. And maybe not quite certain that he's got good in mind for you or for me and for our world. You know, sometimes people like to, to say or are afraid that God is out to punish them. And they may even cry out and say, Pastor, or to someone else, it's for my own good what I'm going through. Yet they're crying out in the hurt. You can see it. It's there. Or perhaps you've met someone who, when something good comes comes along, they start wondering whether God's going to take it away or punish them or take it back. You know, our pagan ancestors in Germany and Holland, they used to think that way. You know, if we'll say Matt and Josiah are going down in a forest and, you know, Matt, well, at that time, he gets the horse that he wants and he says, I got it at a good price. And all of a sudden they gasp. And what they do is they, well, one of them, Matt, would go to the tree and he'd start knocking on it. Because he would be fearful that the gods whom they believed lived in the trees would become jealous and angry and then cause some mischief. Knock on wood, remember? That's what that came from. I even have my relatives in fun when things are going well will kind of knock on their head and say you know knock on wood is that how it is knock on wood that's quite a custom isn't it when you think about it I don't think most of us think that but maybe there are times where we feel that way is that our custom with God you know, in a sense, it's thy will be done, or else it's knock on wood, or knock on wood, isn't it? It's either God is out for our good, or we must be out on our own, and on our own. 
You know, there's several, and perhaps we feel this way, that people, folks around us, or we at times are afraid of losing our jobs or losing loved ones, whatever it may be, are afraid that God is going to punish us or is after us. Even mothers or fathers with their children, they don't want to make the wrong mood lest God take their child away from them. Waiting for God to lower the boom. You know, even you, if you think about teenagers, and I remember myself that age, I made some mistakes and fell into temptations I shouldn't, as we do at all times, but even then, when we're growing up in those times, when we feel guilt, we kind of wonder, is God going to get us? Is he going to be kind of like, is he kind of like that executioner waiting to come and get us and come around like a divine henchman. No wonder when perhaps you and I or others feel that way, it's, it's hard for us to feel as if they don't love God. Or perhaps we wonder at those times whether we love God. How can we love that kind of God, right? I remember Martin Luther when he especially was growing in faith in God, he kind of thought God was like that. An angry, vindictive God. And he, he actually confessed that at that time he hated God. He didn't love him. He hated God. He hadn't yet come to know God as he truly is. And how he cares for us. And if God is like that, who can love if a God like that comes around and abides with us? A God for us, maybe in those times is hard to believe in or to believe that he's that way. But let's do it. Let's suppose that God is for us. You know, that would be a tough one because with all our moods that we have and the way we are, he'd kind of have to come in disguise in an unusual way. Because we built so many arguments against him, haven't we? We plotted so many strategies to ignore him in our lives. We developed so many prejudices to dismiss him that he could hardly come to us and tell us who he is, as we think. Now, he kind of had to come in an unusual way without our noticing it. And once here, he'd have a tough job to do almost an impossible task. He'd have to convince us to believe that we might be afraid to believe that God really is for us. And he cares for us, you and me. And you'd wonder, could he carry it out? Could he live and visit us? Could he persuade us that he's greater than Disneyland and that he is more rewarding than the things and the material stuff we pursue in life? Could he bring it off that he's the king who cares for his people? That he's not far across the sea or way up above, beyond our reach or without looking upon us? Or, In fact, so near that when we hurt, he hurts more than we do. Yeah, that's a lot to ask of God, wouldn't it be? It might be so outrageous a request that we'd never dare ask him to do it. But for his sake, let's try. God, if you really love us, could you show it? Come down, O oh Lord, from your far off throne and join us here. It's so easy to pass down commands if you've got no notion how it is with us in our lives and in our world. So could we challenge you to come for a visit? Try being a teenager facing the temptations they go through and still love God at the same time. Or for that matter, try growing up into adulthood. It's not always the fun. Would you dare join us if you really knew what kind of folks we are? 
We compromise. We juggle things and juggle books in our times and schedules and we step on and we're stepped on. Would you come to our house if you knew what it's like and how we live? Would you come to our work, our school, as one with us and face what we must? If you knew firsthand the decisions that we make and the reasons, sometimes without even consulting you, that we make to survive it all, would you really be so ready to talk your talk of love and forgiveness towards us who've done you wrong? It's easy to forgive when you're high above it all. You can't hurt. Would you still love folks who laugh behind your back or spat in your face? Could you love someone who holds no love for you? You surely expect a lot, O oh Lord, when you say, if you love me, you will obey what I command. But if you loved us, could you really love us as we are? And as though it was the only way in which he could give an answer, Jesus stretches out his arms and he says, this is how much I love you. As he's nailed to the cross for us innocently. That's how he answers. That's how he visits us. The God we complain against has come for us. The God we rebelled against has silently joined our side. We thought he was on our case when he really, he takes up our case. He doesn't condemn us before his father's throne. Instead, he pleads and he cries out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And suddenly, that divine henchman, that angry God we pictured, passes away. And we see the truth as God reveals it. In his place comes the God who turns out to be our friend for us and for all. Whatever punishment comes, he steps up to meet it on the cross and pays for it in full. He takes it and he sets us free through his cross and an empty tomb. We're even free to go if we so choose. But after all he's done, could we really? Why would we? What an awesome God you are. And he says, I will not leave you alone. You're never going at it alone. You are not long, no longer orphans. But if you ever feel alone, or I do, and so God is far away, he just tells us, I send you a comforter, the Holy Spirit. You don't even have to ask, I send it. I send him. And he will be with you, in you, and guide you, and remind you everything about me, about Jesus. And he will see you through it all. And soon, Jesus says, soon. I will see you face to face. Now when we did that, were you expecting something grand or majestic or a miracle or a sign, something that would stun you or amaze you about God? Well, hasn't he already done it? He's given us the sign of Jonah, the Bible says. The sun buried three days lives, alive, victorious. Were we hoping to know ahead of time what's going to come? We think we'd like to, don't we? 
wishing that the Spirit's kind of like a fortune teller for us in that way. And we find in reality, He doesn't tell us what ha will happen to us, only who will go through it with us and who will see us through. Were you and I hoping for some warm, glowing feeling inside? What if he doesn't give us that, but gives us more? The Spirit who gives us assurance, a conviction, tempered like fine steel, helping us stay strong when our feelings let us down. Thanks be to God. God is not far away. He is with us always. Perhaps we've only looked in the wrong places. We've looked for a God in glory and majesty and overlooked the manger and the cross and the empty tomb. We've looked for inner feelings and missed perhaps the brother who comforts us no matter how we feel. We've looked for proofs and instead received promises that are always good in Jesus. I will never leave you. I go and prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me that you may be where I am. And that says it all, doesn't it? Although we may not always be so sure how we love God, God is ever sure on how much he loves us eternally through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. May the peace of God which passes all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in the true faith unto life everlasting through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue at this time with our next hymn. Our hymn is Wonderful, Merciful Savior.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Oh God, teach us to live so that we may daily examine our lives in light of your word. Help us to weed out all that hinders, seeking your forgiveness and striving relentlessly toward godly living. Teach us to live so that we may honor your holy name in word and deed as we worship you and as we serve you in the midst of our families and in our chosen vocations. Teach us so to live so that we may inform our families, our neighbors, and our co-workers of your salvation, that they may hear our bold witness, see our good works, and glorify your holy name. Diminish our fear and discomfort in giving witness to those who do not know your name, or to those who seek to purposely persecute your holy church by your Holy Spirit. Open the hearts of those who do not know you, and so enable us to constantly be witnesses of your holy gospel. Teach us to live that we may love as you first loved us, making your love our song, our speech, and our action. Bless our land with peace and prosperity, faithful public servants, committed military personnel, honest laborers, diligent students, and godly children. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, hold the sick and suffering in your loving hand. Especially, O oh Lord, we remember Mary Leopold, Irene Harms, as well as Dolores McWilliams, Alice Hamber, Clarence Purinan, Roger Hansen, Irvin Cole, Emily Rogers, Jerry Petsky, Ken Rosensky, Lorraine Gill, and those we name in our hearts. Grant them your courage and health, restoring them to full and useful life according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We further pray, O Lord, for those who mourn the death of loved ones. We pray for the family of Kate Larson and all who mourn. We pray that you may ever assure them of presence and peace and of the life now and eternally that is ours and our loved ones in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also praise you and thank you, O Lord, for your many blessings, especially the gift of life and salvation through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. We further thank you and praise you in celebration of Merlin and Polly Myers' 66th wedding anniversary on May 15th. Ever keep them in your care, and may we ever give you all glory and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We sing our hymn, Lord, I Need You.
one who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to our, his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord, look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. 805. Lord's richest blessings to each of you. Just a few announcements uh, uh, before we close with the Lord's peace. Uh, again, if you're in need of supplies, please let us know for delivery or to pick up for you. Glad to do so. We continue also to have the Lord's Supper offered on Fridays and Sundays from 11 to 3 every 15 minutes, uh, doing it in the front of the church, and we'll continue to do so through June 6th and 7th, and even afterwards, we'll offer it on Sundays for an hour for those who still may feel a little concerned about coming to church. We continue also to collect things for the food pantry, uh, just bring them to the church office. And our online Bible study continues to go uh, on 9.30 on Sunday mornings on Zoom. Uh, if you're interested, please just, uh, if you'd email me and give me your name and your number and your email address and we'll connect you with it too. And glad to have you part of it. It's been a joy. We continue also to encourage you to sign or at least do the survey for the possible blood drive here at St. Peter's. Um, it's a wonderful way to be able to help others and we there is a concern especially as now some of the procedures are going to be going on that we're going to be maybe needing more of a uh, uh, supply of blood, so uh, prayerfully consider also donating blood. As I said in the beginning of the service, we're preparing to get ready uh, now that we're able to uh, to worship, but our concern is that we want to make sure that it's safe for you and that you feel comfortable and know it's safe coming to worship. So at this time, we ask for your patience and for your prayers as we will tentatively look at June 6th and 7th for our first weekend in which we'll worship. And we thank you for your prayers and your patience uh, as we uh, get ready for this and for the Lord's blessing. Also, believe it or not, Ascension Day is coming up this Thursday. And we will be recording a service the day beforehand for March 21st. You'll be able to see it on YouTube, Facebook, our website, and also be heard on the radio. And it will be also broadcast on the Access Channel channel. Pastor Bob Butler will be with us again. He's going to help us out as the guest speaker and I'll be the liturgist. May you have a very blessed day in our risen Lord.